Hello and welcome back. Today we are continuing as Great Shing, playing a low infamy kind of markety uh, type of run here. We our market is big thick. Uh, last episode we watched the uh, most cursed timeline for the USA so far. Um, it can get worse. It can always get worse. But we have the CSA, the Free States of America, and the United States of America. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, the United States of America, we have the Free States of America, slavery's banned. The free states, of course, slavery is banned, but the United States still has slavery. And so that's kind of the state of affairs there. We've also been having quite a bit of trouble with both legitimacy and passing laws. Really, this entire run uh, just kind of low rolled on laws quite a bit. And I think that, I, I mean, I think we've made some mistakes some in some places, maybe staying on... Uh, monarchy for too long. At this point, we would actually want to be on Presidential Republic. Um, I don't think we can uh, handle a rev too well, uh, or we're not really set up for it uh, without doing some very sneaky things. Um, like, for example, forcing a revolution with uh, the and then uh, siding with the, the other side. Uh, I believe there are some unique like things with China specifically that make also forcing a rev a little bit not preferable, like it procs the Heavenly Kingdom. Uh, and so we would be switching sides to the Heavenly Kingdom, which is maybe not terrible. It does switch your like unique IGs out a little bit. Um, currently, the Confucian scholars are mad at us. Big madge. Uh, but if we can get on uh, total separation, hopefully we can get a better clout split so we can be a little bit more legitimate and maybe try and do some of the stuff we want to try and do. Uh, namely, uh, before the scholar officials get marginalized, we are going to have to get them to pass... Uh, peasant levies, because we want to pass this, because we want to play around with this uh, as a form of stimulating the economy. And so this is kind of uh, where we're at and where we're going, um, at least with this run. I think that we might have put in a protectorate or ask customs union in before we unpaused. And so let's just take a look at that. Another thing that we're going to be doing uh, here is we are going to be trying to build up a little bit taller in GNZ. Uh, I think the little mini goal of maybe trying to pull the GDP up to 1 billion here uh, is kind of a, a nice uh, funny slash amusing one. And so we're going to try and do that. And now uh, the cap for incoming population where the migration attraction is actually quite he high here, which is very rare for Chinese states. Uh, the cap is based off of, we construct the Panama Canal, big nice. Uh, the cap is based off of your total infrastructure. So we are going to crank up the infrastructure a little bit to allow more people to come here because we are building specifically tall here. We're also encouraging manufacturing here. And if I'm not mistaken, we also have uh, road maintenance here. Now, not because we need more infrastructure, although, you know, the like plus 20 infrastructures well, actually, the plus 20 infrastructure is, like, meaningless at this point because we have, like, 3,600. Uh, but what instead it's about is the state construction efficiency here, um, where we are constructing faster in the state. We have that modifier for state construction efficiency, and we also have the modifier, the positive modifier here from uh, this for uh, another 43%. Maybe it's not worth the authority, but this is what we're doing. Uh, and so, to, on that front at least. And so, we are just kind of continuing on. And soon we will have malaria prevention, which will allow us to snap up most of Africa here. So, we have added a big chunk of construction up to 8k. We're also going after Sulawesi. I know we uh, expressed some interest in going after Scotland, but it looked like the alliance matrix was just a little bit annoying. And there wasn't someone we could declare war on in order to just like dodge the thing on them and then uh, get in. And so, uh, mainly because we don't want to lose Scandinavia out of the customs union law. We got a pretty nice take that gave us, uh, we high rolled for 25%. I think we're going to go for rights of assembly uh, next. Uh, we are making sure to expand out the resources kind of as much as we can. Uh, but kind of, uh, we are, I mean, we're not at the point yet. Uh, but we're starting to have rumblings of the point. You know, like a lot of these places, uh, it's not like there's a ton of available, uh, you know, uh, stuff for us to go after and so we're starting to get the rumblings of running out of resources which is critically uh, basically how your economy stagnates in the late game especially as you you know get over 1.2 billion GDP you start getting the malice for uh, the transfer which is like uh, not going to be uh, you know this multiplier is particularly annoying since you start losing money out of your economy sloughing off money um, but it's mainly the, the resources become so expensive that it's just not tenable now we're not at that point yet, and we're... I, I wouldn't say we're necessarily close, but we're at 8k construction. Like, most of the game, we have not had this level of construction. So, we are going to be building out uh, fairly quickly, and so... 
we will, you know, it's not going to be too, too long because we're using the control button and we're in the resources tab. And like, if you look, we are getting to, you know, a point uh, like, and every time we click, it's just nuking one of these potential things and we're going to be clicking. So over the course of this episode, we might entirely run out of resources, which is kind of about the point where we wanted to be testing this strategy of going for, um, you know, uh, the peasant levies. But what I'm very curious about and what we're doing with the tech, I'm not sure if I explained this last episode, is we're gonna try and go combustion engine and uh, all the way to war gaming. And the idea is we are hoping that if we swap on motorized reconnaissance, it might not swap us off of it. Now, if you're on, um, you know, uh, what is it called? Uh, if you're on peasant levies, you can't swap onto these things, but I'm not 100% sure it automatically swaps you off. So this is, uh, kind of going to be the strategy or what we are going to be, uh, you know, kind of testing out here. Uh, of course, this war is like a nothing burger war. We just get the annexation really easy. So ironclad is a really nice tech, not because it just get, or not be, simply because, you know, it gives us uh, a lot more convoys. We're actually pretty okay in the convoys department, but it gives us a ton more convoys. This gives us better trade routes. And also, um, on top of that, the steamships PM is much, much better. And so this uh, does help stimulate the economy. Uh, we're in the wrong tab. But uh, this PM, the in terms of the outputs, uh, this PM uh, outputting both clippers and, you know, the military ships, uh, is the steamships one is much better. And arc welded steamships, you get it really, really late, but it's actually one of the best PMs in the game in terms of efficiency. Um, but we're going to swap over here. We're going to swap here. And we will begin the, the arduous process of swapping everything over. Um, which is what you do when you get this uh, point in the game. We're going to go Steam Trollers, Steam Power Fleet. We do want this on Auto Expand or these few. Uh, and then we will also swap over to Industrial Port. We will remember to swap over the Ironclads. And I think it's time we swap everything to Electric Trains. Um, we are going to lose a little bit of money, get a ton more infrastructure. Transportation is going to collapse in price, so we're probably going to have to buoy that up. Um, we will, uh, in part, pay more subsidies. Uh, but I think I'm tired of, uh, you know, swapping this over uh, piecemeal and so we'll do that and then we will agonize over making sure or thinking did we swap everything we swapped the military ships we swapped over i think we swapped over everything but this is always uh, a little bit of a rough one but now we also have a bunch of extra infrastructure uh in a bunch of places devil's railroad let's see well we never never taken that down and i think that uh offense is generally better Actually, power projection's all right, and uh, we will continue along our merry way. Of course, this uh, war will be over very shortly. So it looks like we can take on the CSA's debt here, just to emphasize kind of the play pattern for getting people into your market to get this big, thick, juicy, 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 let me take a bite of that type of market. Uh, it kind of dovetails nicely, because it looks like... It sounds like the car's outside, but it looks like Austria-Hungary's in our market, but in fact, they're their own market, and I believe Italy's in their market, and I think that... Yeah, uh, Egypt's also in their market, but when we zoom out, it just looks like it's ours. You know, it looks bigger when you zoom out. So, uh, we will be uh, taking on their debt here, which is just a piddly six million, and then once we have the six million, we get the obligation, and then we should be able to, should, 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 invite them to the customs union using this obligation. Uh, we invite them in, and now, and now, and now, and now, we check the timer. They accept, and now the customs union grows. Look at that. It almost looks like an eagle spreading across America. Truly, this is the American dream of getting the bald eagle spreading its wings. Really, they just wanted to be a part of China's market this whole time. Uh, but that's going to be big nice for us, and uh, we will continue on. We do have to, like, mildly be concerned. If someone else gets multiculturalism, they can really siphon off our pops quite quickly, uh, steal our popsies from us. Uh, but uh, I don't think anyone has it. Uh, the AI generally doesn't go for it. We don't have it. Uh, not that we really need it this run, uh, but we will, yep, just continue gazing upon the masterpiece that is uh, Broken Up Bald Eagle America. I'd like to apologize to chat for our cowardice, and um, here's what we're going to do. We're going to start using the control button when we're building more construction centers, and we are just going to lay it down thick and juicy. 
uh, around here. Now Lasha has a bunch of has a bunch of negative modifiers, or it has minus twenty five percent for construction efficiency. So this is something we have to like kind of uh, care about. Uh, but we are kind of running out of uh, places where we can build construction centers, which is, I mean, there's big nice and there's the opposite of big nice, and that's like the opposite of big nice. And so, uh, yeah, we don't like that. We don't like that one bit. I don't like it in a boat. I would not like it with a moat. Uh, I think that we will go after Mexico now, uh, which is going to be a, quite an expensive Dominion. Uh, but uh, on the flip side of this, we will pull them in as Dominion. Uh, it is going to be 28 Infamy. Wanted to get to kind of a low spot before going after Mexico. And it also has all these new world juicy, juicy countries. So we'll be going for them next and hopefully wrap them up pretty quick. So we pass multiculturalism, which is big nice. But of course, and unfortunately, we do have to rake back a little bit of stuff. I think we're going to rake back uh, the coffee tax. And then uh, this is quite a lot of deficit. I think we'll rake back also the liquor tax, even though it makes more than the tea tax. Because if I recall correctly, tea is a luxury, and this is a basic need that's uh, intoxicants with tobacco as well. Uh, but don't quote me on that. Feel free to uh, check it yourself. Uh, which, of course, actually uh, puts us to barely making money, although the investment pool is growing big huge. We really need to expand construction quite a bit here. Um, and we're probably going to do so in Brazil, I think. Uh, now that it comes down to it, uh, Brazil will be our home away from home. Um, and so, uh, once we do this, actually Argentina would, or we don't have an annexed Argentina. There's some states here in Brazil, though, that, uh, don't have a construction malice. If I recall correctly, like here. And so maybe we'll just max out the construction here. But this is a little bit of a digression. We need to get some more points back. And it's coming down to, do we want to commit to this grand strategy of just absolutely blasting here in GGNZ? And I'm not sure if it's best, but I think we're going to commit a little bit. And we are actually going to uh, drop uh, the um, encourage resource industries here, uh, which is tremendous. Um, but um, we're going to lose it. And then uh, we will be kind of break even. And we need to find a law to pass. Now, I'm kind of a little bit keen on rights of assembly. Now, we can't pass it for how long? 12 weeks. So we could wait 12 weeks, but we have, boy, do we have a mad group that really wants rights of assembly, right? The radicalism is at such a high level. The support's really not that there. I think it's, if I recall correctly, it's based on support, not radicalism. Uh, it's based on the radicals, blah, 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 blah. I think the support is how much uh, the political strength it's going to give. So it's not even going to be that fast to pass. Um, the trade unions want the child labor revoked. Uh, we kind of don't care too much about that. Uh, we don't want to go on the universal suffrage. I think we do want to go on the parliamentary, but the question is, can we swing it right now? Uh, this is going to radicalize rural folk, scholar officials, petite bourgeoisie, and Confucian scholars. Confucian scholars will get significantly kneecapped, and in fact, that fall-off has already started. Uh, it should, uh, yeah, get cannibalized by all the other parties, really, except for the uh, agrarian party, which has also fallen off. Can we get a more legitimate government? We could get a super legitimate government like this. Holla. Uh, but the question is, is what do we want to pass now? Um, I think, well, we can't go guaranteed libs. Man, we really want guaranteed libs. <sighs> I mean, we could wait for... Huh? Proportional taxation's fine. Uh, this is just a bit of a thinking process. We have no migration controls, total separation now. Appointed bureaucrats is, like, good enough. It's actually probably better than elected for us right now. Um, and so... I don't even know if we want propertyed women at this point, because uh, labor is not the problem. We're using zero labor-saving PMs, but women's suffrage is generally hard to get. But I don't think we want the minus birth rate. Our birth rate is cranking up. I think eventually we want to swap to it, but not right now. So we're left in a spot where maybe we just actually wait so we can pass laissez-faire. Now, uh, I know we want to go into peasant levies. Okay, let's actually just take a look. Can we make a legitimate government with the scholar officials and gov? Um, this is not that legitimate. Would it be? This one doesn't really make too much of a difference. Um, I wonder if there's an ideology we can maybe get on someone here. But uh, the the these guys specifically, it's just the guy there that doesn't support it. 
So we can exile him and hope that, uh... Yeah, let's exile this boyo. Uh, and we get a market lib, which is actually pretty big nice. Uh, and so now... The market lib actually is probably going to be more coherent with the, uh... Trade unionists than before, but we will get, uh... This, god, we're so illegitimate. We could just sit on this for a little while. I mean, we'd want to put this guy in power. Forget the exact rules for abdication. Oh, we can't even abdicate because we abdicated recently. God, it's got a huge cooldown here. Oh, this guy's just a kid, too. Huh. I mean, the rural folk's better. We, we do what we would want to get on the parliamentary republic to maybe reform some of this the rural folk but we have hmm these guys haven't weakened enough the Confucian scholars haven't weakened enough yet for us this to be like a realistic pass and we also would have to exile specifically this royalist who's just gonna be a bit of a block so maybe we try let's just try. God, we've been so illegitimate for so long. It's, like, really hurting. We have 121 million radicals. It's, like, uh, really not ideal. Maybe we even reduce taxes a little bit here, uh, just so we float a little bit of a deficit, because we, there aren't really good places for us to put construction centers. So we could do this, and then decrease taxes. The armed forces are going to be mad, as well as the trade unions. The trade unions have such a good bonus, but let's decrease this two notches which is going to uh, increase standard of living and also put us in contested government space and stimulate the economy uh, quite a bit uh, because people will be spending more. Uh, Prussia sides with Mexico against us. Well, that's fine with that. Oh, no, wait, we don't want to swap now. We don't want to do this now. We want to research all these texts to see if we can do the things, the swaps with, like, timing. God, shoot. Just shooting myself in the foot here. Okay, so we're just going to come off this, actually. We're going to... I think we're just going to sit with the legitimate government for a bit. Raise the taxes. And, uh... Let the money acquire. Uh, especially as the, the bonuses start rolling back in. Uh, we can put in something big on Prussia as well, because they just joined this play. Um, which is, we actually might need a bit more military. Now, we put down a bunch of level 1 barrackses in, uh, two strategic regions. And the reason why is because if you have a level 1 barracks, um, you can add, like, 30 levels to it in a pinch. Uh, both in Brazil and in, uh, this strategic region here. If you have a level 1 barracks, uh, you won't have to pay the penalty, uh, or that you won't incur the penalty for, uh, uh, what is it, uh, equipment, uh, adjustment. So this barracks will not have to incur the penalty if we just added 30 here randomly once you already have the first one. Um, and so this is one reason. Also, uh, it locks in the PMs, which is kind of more the reason we were thinking about, um, when we did this. And so, uh, that will be pretty good. But I think we actually might need to conscript, uh, in order to do this. Uh, what are we doing with our lives? We do want to use the, uh, uh, reset production methods over here in, uh, Sululand the Sulu area, which will fix all of our PMs. But we're probably going to conscript quite a bit uh, to try and make this Prussia thing stick. I don't know if we even put in any war goals on Prussia, to be honest. Uh, I'd rather just enforce on Mexico faster, I think. Like, uh, maybe we would want war reps. I don't think we want to bust up Prussia and make Prussia smaller, because uh, I think that we could eventually make them decay into minor power or major power or something like this. Although, releasing the coastal states like Pomerania might be something we want to do, but I'd rather they actually just form the North German Fed. I'm not sure if they could do it if Austria or Hungary is already formed, though. A big, nice malaria prevention. This tech is going to be pretty important. I don't think we need to increase to the max level institution, to be honest. We bring out the maps and straight edges. I think we're just fine blasting uh, with this pacing. Uh, we might even be getting, you know, our... Uh, our colonial expansion. We're gonna make sure we're colonizing everywhere now, though. We might be even getting this in, uh, you know... Or actually, let's see what the speed looked like. Uh, what was... Where's our... 
Oh my god, my brain, this brain lag here. Uh, but yeah, it looks like we're on 50 days, or maybe not 50 days. Oh, maybe we have to save and reload. No, we have a penalty here. Uh, but we, it looks like we have 50 day modifiers everywhere with just the level 3 investment, so there's really no point in increasing the investment. We're just gonna fly through here. We're probably gonna have a lot of native uprisings, but that's pretty okay considering we're in infamy mode, uh, going after, uh, Mexico here. Uh, like this. I think that, you know, uh, hmm... I think that what we're going to do here is, uh... We're really not running this, uh, we really don't necessarily need this much money, and so we're gonna remove this consumption tax, because we're running a positive uh, balance, and, um, we're going to instead do this, and we're going to go resource, or we're gonna go edicts, decrees, and we are going to do, I think we are going to, do, man, we actually could do, I'm so tempted to go promote social mobility here, which would actually make, uh, the trade unionists pop off. Uh, the reason being is that political engagement is largely based off of, um, you know, uh, literacy, which is in turn based on, well, this just increases literacy, right? Promotes social mobility, will increase uh, education access by 25%. We actually have a huge chunk of pops here, and they have plus 50% um, political power. Um, you know, we have 42 million, and so it's effectively like 60 million. This is like 60, this is like 10% of our clout here. And so if we promote social mobility, especially with a lot of manufacturing and all these universities, this will jack up, well, the universities that are probably already at maximum, um, literacy, so it's not going to do anything for them, but it will probably jack up the trade unionists a little bit. Or we can encourage resource industry in Shanxi. Yeah. That was kind of the, the thinking originally, but uh, just that we might benefit more from the encouraged resource industry. Uh, it's not that the economy really needs super stimmy right now, it's just that the best way of stimming it by adding construction like isn't really good because we have a bunch of provinces that just have construction malices. Like if we click here, uh, we have construction malice. I guess we have Ominius Gyarus doesn't have a construction malice. Okay, pump the brakes here. I wish we could see the construction, but we saw all these didn't have construction analysis, so we're actually just going to max these out here. And we're going to add more construction as well. Now, did Bahia have a construction malice? Wait a second. Alright, we got to click the tab. So it looks like Bahia... Looks like all this up to all that. Okay. So we are going to... Just max out all these construction centers. I think this is a lot of construction centers, though. Like, a lot, a lot. I think we're, like, just going, like, 15k. No, not 15. Maybe 12k. Definitely think we can afford that junk. Um, definitely think... Definitely, definitely think we can afford it. I don't think we can afford it. Well, that's a, that's a future journalist problem, I suppose. So, construction's up to 12k, up from 7k-ish, something like this. I forget the exact numbers, uh, but that is quite a big number. I'm not sure if we can even sustain this much. I mean, I think we can. I think we build into it. Like, I think that this is untenable if it were to, if our current economy size were to stay that size, but our economy is going to rapidly grow. Uh, we also put in a whole bunch of, you know, uh, construction orders here in uh, South America, primarily in this area, uh, putting in some agriculture. Uh, and if we take a look at the culture map, you know, the long term plan is coming to fruition. It's mostly Han out here. It's Han out here for a bitch. And so this is kind of what the whole plan was. We have managed to keep unemployment. It's actually under 9 million now. Um, you know, uh, it has not risen over the course of the game. We have managed to, you know, keep it tamped down. And we have a lot of peasants, but a lot of these are now over here in, like, the sub farms in these areas. Uh, they are employed by all the Han people who fled uh, the problems that will not here anymore because we added a ton of jobs here. But um, this has kind of been the idea. Now, I'm assuming this is an obligation to ourselves. <laughs> We owe it to ourselves. Treat yourself, girl. A um, little bit of self-care and it went a long way. Something like this. I think that we'll reassign this guy. Oh, this guy's actually doing battle. Uh, well, this front needs help. We do have a landing attempt going on in Prussia. I'm not sure if it's going to be successful. Um, we have a triple land, um, but uh, it's kind of a little bit of a lazy triple land. One of them was landed with a two-stack navy, and... Um, it looks like that one's failed. This one's about to fail. Uh, we really don't care too, too much about uh, the war goals we have on them, but we have wars going on with natives anyways, so might as well, um, you know, kind of 
engage Prussia anyways, we are going to humiliate Prussia as the war goal. And so uh, this is going to be a fine thing. Uh, but yeah, that's how things are going. This Mexico war should be, well, so here's the thing. We actually got to get this guy reassigned here because the capital's over here. We got to stick on the capital, uh, which we are on. Uh, and we probably just need to put in a whole bunch of landings all over Mexico just to enforce faster. So the past the socialism does get triggered because uh, we had our boyo die. Uh, whoever was in charge of the literati died and instead we got a communist, which we are actually pretty okay with because we're about at the point where we need to go co uh, council republic anyways. Uh, and so uh, we can enable wage subsidies, yuck, regulatory bodies, nice. Uh, or we can pass laws protecting the trade unions, which gives pop traction. I think we're going to do protect labor rights, which is going to put a major pinch on uh, bureaucracy. Uh, but we're pretty okay with this. We're pretty okay with decreased mortality from working conditions. And it also gives us a lot of something to build. And so now what we can do is we can, hey, look, hey, where do we have the biggest tax malice? And then any place that's not 51 is going to benefit most from each level of construction. So we're just going to start by 51-ing a whole bunch of these. And this is probably enough to take care of it, but we'll just overbuild it a little bit. And by a little bit, I mean, like, by 100, because we're China. And um, this will kind of solve our what do we build now, a uh, little bit of a dilemma. Uh, and we're probably going to go communist in the near future, considering we have an anarchist and a communist here. Um, you know, it shouldn't be too hard. Uh, it's going to make the scholar officials really pissed. Uh, you know, the thing, the, the problem is, though, the question is, how do we get on to peasant levies, you know? Because uh, we don't want to do it yet, but we want to do it soon. Uh, but not yet. We can't do it yet because we can't, we actually pulled off of it. Um, I think we let it take a little while, but uh, uh, we are trying to do rights of assembly right now. Uh, we're at, uh, you know, 46 thing. We have the Southern Andean secession. Yuck. Uh, infertile ground. You know, that's also a little bit yuck. Oh, this guy, he's like, I'm done. I've done my thing. I think we just let him, uh, you know, fade into the black. And uh, we will now have uh, free agitator slots. Uh, of course, we did before. We don't want to invite the Ludite guy. We actually don't hate inviting a uh, landowner, but this is the guy we exiled, and this landowner is a jingoist, so he will not support peasant levies, which is the opposite of what we want. Uh, we want someone who supports peasant levies would be really super ideal. We get the workplace safety. Yep, so things are going pretty well. Um, we are relanding Mexico to make sure that we stick on the capital. We have this one landing that I for thought was already done, but this is actually an 80 stack coming in on Prussia. I'm guessing it doesn't work because it's just a single land, uh, but it might work. Uh, you know, they might be... Yeah, see, the problem is the landing penalty. Uh, it's almost like, you know, the OG kind of uh, when you were trying to play early on. Uh, but this is a weird secession here. Uh, we will probably, uh, once these guys are done over here, move them on over to the left here uh, to take care of the... Wow, it's just a, just fully scattered everywhere. Uh, I think we'll take the authority hit. It's pretty... Eh, it's a decent chunk of authority, but it's not too big a deal. Um, and so we should be cleaning all of this up uh, relatively shortly. You know what? This is so crazy. I didn't even notice this was a modifier before. We're actually going to screenshot this. Uh, but it, the Skyscraper Site modifier uh, gives 10% uh, construction uh, sector building throughput. Oh, is this just building... Okay, yeah, it gives the construction sector building throughput, and this means it's going to be more output, but also local construction efficiency. Uh, I didn't even realize that this gave this. It also gives the, like, we lose this minus 500 bureaucracy, whatever. But um, this extra construction here makes building tall in the capital even better, which is super nice with Jiangxi. Uh, uh, but uh, that means we are going to be getting uh, a little bit extra juice here. Uh, on the construction sector um, for the state construction efficiency because the throughput is moving to 25%. And so we're getting 43 right now with the 15%, but now we're getting 46. So it's an, like an extra 3% construction efficiency, but this coupled with the fact that we are uh, encouraging road maintenance for another 10% is meaning we are just like stacking a ton of these modifiers here. And uh, you see we have like a level 300 tooling workshop, a 1.4 million employed here, just to kind of... Uh, Let's just take a look at what the GDP here is. It's 200 million just here, which is super nice. And so uh, 
this is a bit of a crank up. Uh, we will, of course, be uh, not losing sight of the prize and building the skyscraper. Now, I don't know what PM we want to use on the skyscraper. Probably Trade Nexus uh, for now, but the government administration throughput uh, maybe in the future. Of course, we can't forget our blimps once we get the tech. And as soon as we unpause here, we're about to get three new boyos into our customs union. Uh, Persia accepts? I said several accepted. Okay, well, it's Persia, Egypt, and another boyo. But the point is the customs union is growing as it should be. Oh, two Sicilies with the other boyo. We managed to get two Sicilies on over. So the Austria-Hungarian, look at that. Not in there. Oh, wait. They were supposed to say yes. Yeah, two Sicilies swaps over. That's right. They joined the light side. We have free cookies. Uh, now, we are paying Kebab, and Kebab is maybe going to be going with war with Great Britain, and maybe we want to just join for free uh, to preserve the territorial integrity of Kebab. But maybe we don't care that much. And I think I think the truth is we just don't care that much. Uh, we did assign people to each of these fronts, but war does break out. So we're a little bit slow getting there, even though we kind of assigned... That doesn't even sound like a car outside. That sounds like a helicopter, which is uh, perhaps a bigger problem. Uh, but we're just not going to uh, try and enforce anything on Prussia with this war, th I think. I think we're actually just going to see if they accept the subjugation and Mexican war reps, and if they do, we'll just peace out here. Um, this is fine with us. We'll, of course, handle whatever this issue is. Oh, they don't have a port. They're cut off because of the rev. Yeah, that the truth hurts. Uh, but now all of our boils will go over here, I assume. Uh, and help put this down faster. Really wish... Uh, I mean, we could demobilize, but I kind of don't want to click the buttons. We have gone way over on the bureaucracy, though, but this is big fine. Uh, it, it, not big nice, but a big fine. Uh, I think we're going to go up on law enforcement uh, to reduce the turmoil and uh, minus on the dangerous working conditions. Quite a bit, actually, because we have a ton extra. Uh, and this is going to, uh, you know, allow us to get more pop. And uh, this pop is, well, not very useful now because we, like, are kind of okay with what's going on. Uh... Yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna fund that kind of thing because we don't want to lose our, lose our general forever. But uh, ooh, we could have joined at the very last minute because Egypt joined too. They're gonna get clapped. Uh, they are two customs union partners, so we don't want them to get clapped too too bad. But um, I don't know, stuff happens. Um, so we're gonna put this down and then be in good shape. So we unlocked motorized reconnaissance, which is, or not motorized reconnaissance, what am I thinking? We unlocked combustion engine, which is a huge tech. Uh, we get automobile production, we're gonna turn that on. Uh, we get public motor carriages, PM, very nice. And we get the combustion engine derricks, which is a huge, very, very efficient uh, PM. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of sinks for oil or oil sinks uh, other than our food industry. So, uh, not too much doing there, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch one of these over we're gonna remember it's hey baby, hey baby, hey babe. And of course there's currently no demand for uh, cars, but we're gonna add uh, some uh, by doing this. And uh, well, there's actually a little bit of consumer demand if I recall correctly. And then I think that we can just swap on over uh, on the uh, other ones or the other PM here, uh, because the public motor carriages, we have an absolute glut of transportation, if I'm not mistaken. And this does fire off a lot of laborers, so this will create a lot of unemployment. Uh, we've actually kept the unemployment numbers really low, but this uh, is going to make it more efficient. And a lot of these places actually have uh, available jobs. Like, they're not fully employed. Like, see this one? Not fully employed. And so, um, maybe it actually won't create that much unemployed, but it will create a much greater output uh, per uh, you know, level of employment, this type of thing. And um, I think there was, was there one more PM? There is one more PM. There's one more PM, really good PM, uh, but uh, not uh, gonna do too much right now because uh, oil is already relatively cheap uh, and it's gonna take a whole more bunch more coal and engines, but this is fine because it is a very strong PM. We're actually producing a ton more oil coming down the pipeline, ha ha ha. And so, uh, there we go. Portugal will become a protectorate if we, uh, take out obligation off of them. This will give us six infamy, which I think kicks us over 25, but not too big a deal. We're gonna stop bankrolling and start damaging relations on the back of that as well. Yep, it's just gonna barely kick us over, and they will just barely say yes. I think we do need to, uh, kind of declare war. I think we want a Dominion land thing, uh, but the problem is the relations aren't low enough yet. We want to find a really small, uh, like, low infamy type war, and maybe annex Nezd, uh, 
especially because we're coming up at a point in the game where it's going to be relevant. But we have to face Persia, who we've recently pulled in the Customs Union. Uh, this is unfortunate. This is a little bit of a pickle. Uh, maybe we could just chill, but we kind of have no chill. We could just annex Oregon. God, that's so much infamy now. It used to be so much less. Uh, they're starting to get a lot of pops. Are they multicultural? Are they accepting Han pops? Surely they're not. No, they're not. But they're getting some Irish pops. Which is a little bit interesting. Hmm. Hmm. So, uh, we saw a very large come up on the back of, uh, the, uh, communications, ooh, the communications click one. I thought the Communist Party was going to do it. The Communist Party was so, pulling so well. Where's the communications click? All right, well, the communications click wins here. Uh, and so we get a free government reform. It's going to be hard to put these guys... Man, I thought that the Communists were pulling so well. What happened? I was about to make a, a commentary on the Communists doing really, really well. Oh, I know what happened. Their color is exactly the same. Please. Uh, so, uh, we do see the communications click, uh, having, you know, quite a bit of power under wealth voting here, which is, you know, fine, uh, dominating the election, and, uh, but we want to keep, the, or we have to keep this guy in power because we're still on monarchy. Uh, now, we do have quite a big block wanting council republic, but it's going to be pretty hard to get that through, uh, but maybe we can get this, uh, we've been wanting to go parliamentary for so long, I'm, like, 100% sure this revs, and I'm, like, 100% sure... That this rev is like catastrophic for us because we have our capital will be surrounded uh and like had we we could have played like this entire run better we could have put the capital on the coast which would have been a key important distinction we could have built a lot more military abroad which would have been an important thing uh to make uh this part uh a little bit easier i suppose we could go presidential people don't hate it well they still hate this too uh really just the 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 fact that the rural folk uh, still have that boyo who's a royalist is actually kind of the biggest problem here. Because uh, if we didn't have this guy, we would be able to get through the scholar officials and the Confucian Union, right? Uh, and the, these three, the armed forces. Uh, this guy's even a Republican, so uh, he is all for uh, parliamentary. But um, we can't do it through... We, uh, it's just, I think they have too much clout for us to get it done. Either way, uh, we're still on this uh, for now. Um, but I think we're going to conclude uh, the episode here. Beep boop, some stuff going on outside. Uh, I think the story of this episode, uh, hopefully this got up to kind of a good level. Well, uh, it's nearly a quarter million, but I think the story of this episode is starting to really build up in GNZ uh, and really, really crank up. You see the GDP heat map is starting to look very very light for the rest of the world relative to GXZ and also like just China as a whole like uh but we are just popping off we have nearly a quarter million GDP just here in the capital and um we're stacking modifiers here you know I think it's fine to just build over here uh because each one of these is going to be worth 170 percent of the building when you count just for throughput we are also getting uh industrial organizers from the trade unions they aren't powerful um we don't have any events that we've rolled you do roll events uh from when you are encouraging manufacturers which is nice I don't know uh in theory uh, whatever the math is how often the, however often the events happen like if the events are on 20 percent of the time and they give a 20 percent bonus right you should consider the events being uh, effectively an extra like what is the math on that uh four percent uh so this would be like 24 percent uh you know manufacturing output if you get what i'm picking up or you're picking up what i'm putting down but this combined with the road maintenance is pretty nice now uh the construction uh construction efficiency like uh has diminishing returns you know uh, if you increase if you go from 50 percent construction efficiency to 100 you're doubling it right but if you go from 100 to 150 you're only increasing it by 50 percent um right so it's uh the it's effectively diminishing returns when you stack a lot of it but um, we are building here more than anywhere else. You see the standard of living here is considerably higher than the rest of the nation, which is pulling up, uh, which is serving to pull up the clout of, uh, or the wealth level, and thus the voting level, of guys like the trade unionists and the literati, who are quite powerful and quite happy, and most of them are here, I think, uh, because... <laughs> 
we have the 200 uni level 200 uni here we might even increase that a little bit more i think that we're still tech spreading yeah we're starting to get to the point where we're uh we're not tech spreading every tech bracket anymore uh so we're like fully caught up with the rest of the world so that 200 uni uh, might be worth downgrading or switching to something else after we finish wargaming we might just go way ahead of time for compression ignition because this is really strong tech uh and um there's not really a society tech we want i mean we could go political agitation for single party state uh we could go elevators for the increased um uh to unlock the increased uh what is it uh, construction sector max level that actually uh, appeals quite a bit uh but uh i think we'd rather go arc welding or towards arc welding if that was the intention but compression ignition is open really really strong tech uh and we are in danger of running out of resources uh speaking of earlier in the episode i said we were going to run out of resources let's take a look i think we are starting to run out of resources you see that we have like the lead mines are nearly all built out now same with the iron mines and this is just over the course of one episode same with the logging camps and the fishing wharves uh the coal a lot of coal remains but a big part of this is we're not using any labor saving pm so if we ever start uh we would run out of coal very quickly on that and so uh that's kind of how things are going just a quick look at the market before we you know kind of finish things up we do have the eagle spreading its wings over here in the americas the naturally the chinese eagle uh the chinese uh bald eagle as it were spreading its wings over here lol lol, lol. uh and uh yeah i think that next episode we will maybe be thinking about going communist i mean we would love to go communist for economic reasons because our gdp is sufficiently large you can see our uh, the shape of our unit here is uh starting to flatten out despite the fact that we like went from 7k to 13k construction we nearly doubled construction this episode um and uh the reason for this is of course or part of the reason for this is uh that uh you know you could see the investment well the investment pool is actually draining right now because it was growing before now it's not even growing but it's being multiplied by 0.38 uh in order to uh as a result of the gdp being big and as the gdp gets bigger this modifier gets more and more uh disadvantageous you see our investment pool well it says it's shrinking uh is it shrinking relative to the size of our economy anyways it, right now it's currently quite built up it's probably not shrinking right now because we aren't fully filled out uh but once we fill out uh it'll be shrinking instead of growing which it had been for some time so while we nearly doubled construction we kind of are going to have this lagging uh thing hit us like a sack of bricks especially because we're like running a pretty large deficit right now but at the same time we did crank up quite a bit in this episode i forget what the gdp started at i think we've gone up about half a billion and this is in a band where it's like harder to go up you know 800 million to 1.3 is probably easier than 1.3 to 1.8 maybe I am actually not sure if that's true. Uh, but anyways, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, uh, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. You know, do the YouTube algorithm stuff. Um, if you've been sitting a while, maybe take a walk. It's good for your health. And other than that, have a good day.